Hey guys, how you doing? It's your boy, Papi Mima. Today I'm going to be reacting to Drug Dealer Meets Jesus Christ. Um, <clears throat> yeah, um, this sounds a lot like, what's it, my pastor's testimony. Um, my, my main pastor in London, he said he became a Christian while he was in prison. It's all crazy in the dunya. Anyways, let's get into it, Lego. From secondary school, I got into uh, smoking weed and then into like uh, selling weed. So, from that sort of age, I was just selling drugs and that in school, really, just to make myself some extra money. And mm. as I got older, uh, I was really into music, so I used to go do a lot of raving from the age of about 16 years old. Um, again, selling drugs, used to sell pills, uh, cocaine, um, weed. Uh, so, I used to be uh, kind of crazy sometimes, but it's, uh, I found it exciting, I have to say that, uh, and uh, we did have a lot of good times as well, um, I had a lot of money, so we used to go out raving continuously, sometimes go out five, four or five times a week, um, but all through that, I wasn't, I wasn't really happy, because I was, I was actually quite, a, quite an angry person, um, and I remember my mum always used to say to me that, well, he used to tell me that I was just like so angry. And I guess what I know for a fact, I was pretty disrespectful around the house as well. So, um, obviously, she, I think she just used to look at me and what's going on with him. I think she had a sort of an idea of what was going on in my life, but not not to the full extent of that thing. Mm. But yeah, uh, it's kind of dark at times, definitely. Got to a point uh, where one night, uh, I was sitting there, uh, me and two of my friends had come back from <coughs> some club and we was back at our house and it had been like a really good night and uh, we had a laugh, both of my friends left, it was probably about four o'clock in the morning I reckon and I was sitting there just watching a bit of TV about to go up to bed and I was just thinking, I just had this like this feeling inside of me that I was just so unhappy which, um, which was funny because at this point, at that moment in time, right there and then I actually was very happy, do you know what I mean? In the sense that I had a really good evening. Um, but this, this this feeling of like, almost like depression. And I thought, like, why, like, why do I feel like this? That was literally me, oh my goodness. And obviously I knew about Jesus and I knew about God. And I just started crying. And I was just sitting there in my living room by myself. And I was just, I had like tears rolling down my face. And I just began praying to God, which I hadn't done. Like maybe I prayed to God when something's going, oh God, please help me out with this or that, but I hadn't done it for like years. I hadn't prayed to God properly. And uh, I said, uh, basically I told, I was telling uh, God about all these different issues what I had um, with, with like how, I didn't really used to like myself, I don't think, at all. I didn't like, used to like the things what I did, deep down as well. And um, all these issues with like pornography, uh, taking drugs, being horrible to people, being horrible to my mum and dad. Um, you know, like relationships, how you treat people and stuff like that. And I was just sort of like pouring my heart out to God and I was just putting them all before it's possible. I remember someone told me to, to uh, someone had told me how you should bring all these things that you don't know how to deal with and put them before the cross. So I was just laying, like sitting there crying and I got on my knees and uh, telling God all these different things obviously. And then, uh, and it felt like I'd been there for like about no more than 10, 15 minutes. But then when I looked to looked at the clock, it was about six o'clock in the morning. So I'd been there for like two, like about two hours, two and a half hours, something like that. So it was like really weird. I thought I'd been here for like ages. But at the end of the prayer, I sort of said to God, if you've heard me, um, then give me a sign. Because I've sort of had that feeling before when I was younger, how God didn't listen to your prayers when you spoke to him or whatever. So then I went to bed, um, woke up the next day. And again, my mum was on my case about, about um, this, uh, this meeting and a guy called Steve Hill was going, uh, was doing a, uh, um, how do you call it, you know them big, big evangelistic meetings, doing a big, uh, big meeting up in Dagnum. And uh, I thought, well, do you know what I mean? I asked. Oh, Dagnum, that's the end though. East side, east side, gang, gang. Oh, God, to, to give me a sign. 
So I thought I've got to give it some sort of chance, you know what I mean? So it got to the evening, I went up to this meeting and uh, and as soon as I got in there, I hated it. It was, it was horrible. And we sat down, I was sort of like in the middle of a row. And I remember just looking around thinking, I want to get out of it. But when you when you got all people around you, don't, you don't really want to make a fuss or whatever. Um, and he started to preach. And he's going, oh, I can't remember, not one word, but he said, like, he went to our meeting. But I just remember sitting there during it, and I had tears again, like, coming down my face. And I was shaking, I was sitting there, just shaking, thinking, I want to get out, I want to get out. And that's what I was thinking, like, constantly. And it got to the point where he gave the altar call. And I don't know why, it's almost like my... The altar call. Oof. The altar call is what changes your life. Like, I've answered the altar call. And that is when a guy prophesied my life to me. It's all crazy, bro. Legs took me without my mind even doing it. But as soon as I got up and I started moving, like I was—I uh, think I was probably one of the first people at the front. And uh, I got down, obviously, in tears again, I'd like <laughs> crying again uh, before God. And uh, I give my heart uh, that night. And I remember like um, this preacher, like really taking like. You know, spend time talking to me afterwards as well. And it felt like, I don't know, it felt like really special. I felt so different after I did my life. And it was just like a whole a whole sort of like weight had lifted off my shoulders and it sort of felt brighter. Steve Hill at the meeting said, everything you've got in your house, which is, do you know what I mean, pornography, uh, drugs and, and everything, get out of your house, get out of your life. And I got my friend's boyfriend and said, I've got to get all around. So I can't have it in the house, I can't have it near me. And he was sort of like, oh, like, what are you going about? Like, so I like, I've just got to bring it around. So I went around and took, took, all the, took all the stuff around there. And I said, look, I can't do this anymore. I said, I'll help you collect the rest of the money, what we was owed, but I can't, I can't do, like, I'm not going to sell drugs anymore. And he was, like, um, a bit confused, but, like, like it's sort of, like, like weirded out by it as well, thinking, what's, like, what's wrong with him? And uh, I didn't actually tell him that night. This was, this was what my old friends... Would, would always think of me like why doesn't max smoke weed why doesn't max have sex with girls anymore why doesn't max why isn't max the same as he used to be you know what i mean like what the reasons was it wasn't until the next day he's still on my case ring me saying like what, why have you suddenly decided not to do this and that and uh and i told him that i've been to this meeting and that i've given my life to jesus and he knew that my family was christians but he he was quite like um i don't know surprised that i would given my heart to god so uh then he said, like, and then I said, well, do you want to come to this meeting? Because it was like a week, it was like a week long event, I think. And um, the next night he came, and then he gave his life as well. And uh, it was just amazing, do you know what I mean? We'd come from, from where we'd been, and all of a sudden we're there talking about Jesus after the meeting. We was all happy, all like hugging each other and that. And we was all like bouncing off each other. Went around our mate's house and sat there and smoked a joint, talking about God, do you know what I mean? It's a bit... Uh, bit contradictory but we was all like really excited about like what just happened because my life's changed completely do you know what I mean there's a reason for me living and a reason for me being on this planet and there's hope whereas before I had no hope my hope was to be some sort of like drug dealing gang lord like do you know what I mean mm. so, I don't know I was living in a fantasy I think but my hope now is drug dealing gang lord like that reminds me of a scripture in the bible it's like what use is it for a man to gain the world but lose his soul and going down that path in life it's only going to lead to one thing prison or death and if it leads to death and you die in that sin god will just say depart from me you know what i mean so even if you get if you just get arrested and go to prison that's a chance to change your life you know what i mean that's mercy right there see, see friends who who from where i've come from to see them saved and i don't know just to to raise my family i don't know it's just so exciting when i look to mm. the future there's like an excitement there um, whereas before it was all i don't know it was just just rubbish mm. My faith in Jesus, uh, basically I feel like now that these things that I've done in the past, you know what I mean, they, 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 you know what I mean? they're forgiven and I'm free from uh, a lot of problems and issues that I had before. I know for a fact that I'm free from like um, a stronghold of like, drugs that was on my life and, and liars as well. I used to tell loads of liars all the time. Or whatever. 
Yeah. Basically, uh, my faith in Jesus is uh, so I'm free. I'm free from everything. Amen. Great testimony, powerful testimony that really did touch my heart, man. Like, I like watching these kind of videos, you know what I mean? You know, just people giving their testimony of how they came to Christ and, like, they came from all different sorts of backgrounds, all, like, just, you know, all different kinds of sin, all different kinds of lifestyles, and then they've all given that up, you know, to follow this path in life, and it's just beautiful, in my opinion, you know what I mean? But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Do streets. Bless you guys and peace. Oof.